Hello and welcome to She Leads Confidently, my podcast. I'm Karen Barner, your host, and welcome to episode 112, where we talk about holiday shadows and facing family past, or what I like to call shadow season. If you have any shadows, they will show up during the holiday, because if there's one thing families love to do, is remind other family members of their bad outcomes, their debacles, their mess ups. You know, when I was in first grade, we went to open house and I went to sit down and I missed the, this chair. So I fell on the floor, by laughed, My parents until their death reminded me of that. Now, I didn't remember it. I was in first grade, Lord, I was four, four or five years old. I graduated at 17, so I was there, I was like four years old or five years old when I started. And it was like, holy moly, I didn't even get it. They would laugh and they'd be like, oh, what a klutz. But that stuff sticks with you because it's telling you you're clumsy, you're goofy. And so it kind of becomes your persona. Um, anything that you did that they want to poke fun at. I was always the chubby one. And my, not, my Nana was chubby, so I adored my Nana. And so they would always get on the fact that out of the three kids, I was the chubby one. And I was the least athletic one. Well, the reason I was the least athletic one is when we would do athletics at my house, whether it was basketball, football, races, my dad would always trip me. And he said, well, built character. And the other two kids, you know, don't have a problem with it. Well, the other two kids don't have a problem with it because they're three and four years older than I am. So of course they don't. It's me that has the problem. So again, I didn't do sports. You develop the shadow of the fear of disappointment. You never give 100%. And some of you women may relate to this. You never give 100% to anything you do because you have such a fear of the failure of disappointment. Maybe when you were a child and your parents said, oh, we're gonna take everybody to Disney World when your dad gets his bonus and dad never got the bonus, but they talked about it and talked about it and talked about it like it was a done deal. And then the dad didn't get the bonus and there went Disneyland or Disney World. It could be anything like that. It could be, you know, we're going to go to grandma's house. We're going to have dinner at grandma's and it's going to be wonderful, but it never happened. After a while of parents doing that, you build up this natural thing that that you don't want to be disappointed anymore. So you don't allow yourself, you don't set yourself up to it. So when you have great events and things in your life, you're always kind of like, hmm, okay, that's, that's awesome. That's cool. But it's the same with at your workplace at anything. You'll never give 100% because you're so afraid of being disappointed. It's almost like you you wait, every day you wake up and think, today's the day I'm gonna get fired. Today's the day my husband's gonna walk out on me. Today's the day, and you always have that one bad thing. And that's how, that's a shield, and that's a shadow of how you protect yourself from bad outcomes. So when you sit down at the dinner table this Christmas, Hanukkah, whatever holiday you celebrate, or New Year's, when everybody goes to New Year's, a lot of people do goal setting at New Year's, so we'll be talking about that. But when you sit down, I want you to just kind of live, go with these three tips. The first tip is practice mindful breathing. When people start making fun of you, you know, as I've gotten older, I've learned to look at them and say, no, that's not really nice, or we don't really need to bring that up. I mean, my parents have since passed, but even when I get around my siblings, it's like, we don't really need to bring that up or, you know, you guys may remember it, but I certainly don't remember it, so let's just move past it. But if that doesn't work, just sit there and just practice mindful breathing. Just breathe in, breathe out, and just listen to your breathing and just tell yourself good things. Just have your, your positive affirmations ready. And then set boundaries. Be clear when the teasing starts, hey guys, don't cross this line. You know, if, if I say, let's, you know, let's move on, let's move on, okay? Let's all agree that this isn't going to be a dog pile. We're going to pile on each other or we're going to hurt each other's feelings. Let's just be jovial. I mean, there are some bad comes that, you know, when I graduated from high school and I walked across the stage that my parents watched as I stopped and cracked open my diploma to see if it was signed because I wasn't sure because I graduated so low in my class. That's funny. I still think that stuff's funny. But if they get to that, well, it's because you weren't very smart or, you know, you had a speech impediment and everybody, or you had this, then it's not funny anymore. So you draw a boundary and say, guys, that's, that's not funny. Or when, you know, they bring up an old breakup with a boyfriend. It's like, guys, we don't need to talk about that. You know, back then it was really traumatic. Now I barely remember it. So let's move on. So set clear boundaries in your mind because the same stories come up every year. They came up at Thanksgiving. They're going to come up at Christmas. It's just life. 
So just set clear boundaries. And then when you hear it, reflect on it. What is that shadow trying to teach you? A lot of times, you know, after family get-togethers, my sister's here, because she always bring up stuff. I'll sit there at night and I'll reflect, what was that shadow trying to teach me? What do I need to learn from that situation that maybe I didn't because I was so caught up in the moment of it that I didn't learn the lesson? How can I reframe that negative experience? You know, falling out of the chair in first grade, I don't remember, but we'll use that as an example, is, you know, and my parents do say that I bounced up and just started laughing, made a joke, and moved on. It's how I learned how to use humor to deflect. I mean, I consider myself a funny person. I should have been a comedian, but I use humor to deflect things. And so that's what that shadow created. But I had to learn as I got older and, you know, really learned shadows, I had to learn that. I also use humor as a way to avoid things. Instead of confronting something that I really needed to look at, I would just kind of ha 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 and move on. So there's a double-edged sword there. So practice mindful breathing. Just learn how to, if you don't know how to meditate, take a meditation class. I can sit in a meeting, I can sit at a board meeting and as everybody's talking, I can spend one or two minutes just meditating, just going within breathing, calming myself down. And it's not that uh, calming down is probably not a good word. Breathing and just recentering myself. Because sometimes when you have 20 board members around a table and they all have great, brilliant ideas, it's hard to capture it. And for me, who is um, an em empath and feel all the emotions in the room and all the stuff going on around me, I need to learn how to, I needed to learn how to stop and center myself because otherwise I get too overwhelmed. In fact, when I leave meetings, I have to just go sit by myself. And my staff knew this, has known this for years. I have to go just sit. If I have a really busy day at work, when I go meeting to meeting to meeting to meeting, when I get home, my husband knows I just, I just need to sit. We don't need to chat about my day. We don't need to talk about, you know, what we're gonna do that night or, you know, what vacation's coming up. Just give me time, I need to breathe. And a lot of times I read, but reading for me is how I calm myself down, how I recenter, and how I just kind of reset everything. So if you're, an, if you're empathic and you feel all the vibrations, you have to learn how to kind of deal with that. I mean, especially during holiday season, you go to big family dinners and there's 50, 75. My husband has a larger family and when we go there, it's like, you know, when we used to go there, there's 75 people there all ages and just all different kinds of conversations and I would get so overstimulated until I you know I met a shaman friend who you know I, a shaman instructor taught me how to be a shaman that she taught me also how to center myself pretty quickly um, you know I have a meeting today at 10 down at the Arizona legislature about something and sometimes I get mad because it's like you guys don't understand but I can't stop and say senator you don't understand instead I just go within and just calm down and get back, refocus. So if you want to learn about any of these techniques, let me know. Put it in the comments. If you're watching this on YouTube, obviously give me a subscribe, but put comments in. I'd be happy to answer back. If you're, if you're watching this on TikTok or any of my other social media, if you're on my Facebook page, if you're on my Facebook page, I'm starting to do weekly trainings. This coming week is to kind of is to go over the outline of the Blue Rose Blueprint, the my signature program that helps women and men heal their shadows to recenter themselves and live your best life. I want 2024 to be your best life ever. That's my goal. 2023 was a great year for me. I stopped a lot of things. I'd learned things. I want 2024 to carry the momentum, learn new things, and take on new adventures. So if you have any questions, let me know. Remember, this is shadow season. Don't let people get under your skin. Don't let the stories take you back and beat you down. It used to be, now I'm digressing, I know. It used to be smeared to tell, you know, say something about me. And I would really sit down and think, are they right? Is that really how I am? Maybe they're right. Because I didn't have a firm identity of who I, who I am. But once you get a firm identity of yourself and people say things to you, you've got to remind yourself that they're coming from their framework of their world. When they tell you something, like they tell you, hey, you're chubby. You know, people used to tell me, you know, you're the fat one in the family. 
uh, you know, okay, well, I am the fat one. But that's coming from their perspective. I would talk to other people that would be like, when I came home from the military, I weighed like 117. I was really thin. And I remember somebody looking at me and saying, you know, you're still kind of chubby. And my mom looked over and I'm like, what did that come from? Are you kidding? She needs to put weight on. And I learned in that moment that everybody has their perspective. So when they talk to you and people criticize you or make fun of you, they're making it from their viewpoint of the world. So sometimes instead of getting hurt, if you could just teach yourself to stop and listen, what are they saying to me? Because they're telling me a part about themselves and sometimes it's a cry for help. Now again, I'm empathic, so I pick up on this stuff. And how can I help them? So, you know, when people say something to you, that's their view of the world. Just worry about your view of the world. You know, I always say, just stay in your lane. Just be you, be the best you. And if somebody around you is talking smack, just let it go. Let it go. It doesn't, it's confronting them gets you nowhere because it's their view of the world. Okay, I really hope this helped. If you guys, again, have any questions, put it in the comments below. If you're watching this on iTunes, Spotify, or any of those, give me a subscribe. I look forward to serving you in 2024. You're going to see a lot more coming from me. 2023, like I said, was a year of deep change, um, deep reflection, just deep thinking. So, you know, I've been working on my new book. I've got a lot going on. So check it out. Like I said, on Saturday, this coming Saturday at 9 a.m. Arizona time, which is I think we're mountain time right now. We switch. We go mountain time Pacific, mountain time Pacific. We're one of the few states that never changes times. We stay the same time. Um, so it's 9 o'clock mountain time, which means there's two hours between us and the East Coast. Um, give it a listen. We're going to talk about my, my new signature Blue Rose Blueprint. So if you have any questions, let me know. You guys have a great, great, great holiday season. I do want to you know, check in next week with you all. Um, and don't let shadows ruin your holiday. Worst case, just write down what pops up for you and revisit it afterwards. Talk to you guys later, and here's to you finding your blue rose.